Hello guys, it's Johnny time and today in this smart contract hacking and auditing video, this is the question that we're going to ask and try to answer. How AI tools and advanced Web3 security tools can help both auditors and smart contract developers to make sure the contracts are safe and secure. And we're going to do that by taking a close look on a real DeFi hack, $44 million dollars stolen and we're gonna cover the hedgy finance hack recent case study so whether you're a smart contract developer DeFi protocol founder or a smart contract security researcher this video is exactly for you now without further ado let's get started So we're going to start by understanding what is hedgy finance and how they got exploited and how come $44 million were stolen from the protocol. We'll see the technical details of how this attack happened. And then we will see if there are some kind of AI tools and security tools that could have prevented this exact attack scenario. Hedge Finance is a token infrastructure for on-chain teams. It allows teams in Web3 to distribute tokens both to their investors, to the community, and so on. And they can do so with lockups and vesting mechanisms. So it's a very valuable tool for any Web3 team that wants to distribute efficiently their tokens. And they had many users. This is how the UI looks like. So if you go to Hedgy Finance, you can either be a token manager, maybe a protocol founder that wants to distribute tokens, whether it's to the investors or to the community, or you can also be a recipient, someone that is eligible to claim a token through a campaign and get your tokens from the Hedgy smart contracts. Now, this is the nice UX, but behind this UX, there are smart contracts that are deployed on chain and they are the ones that operate these whole campaigns. And these are the contracts that the users and the teams interact with, whether it's to create, manage campaigns or to claim the tokens. And this exact repo contains both the contracts, the scripts, all the tools, and of course, the audits that these smart contracts went through through smart contract security reviews. Now these claim campaigns repository and smart contracts have all kinds of features from creating and managing campaigns to claiming tokens so users can come and claim their tokens. And it uses Merkle trees so users can prove their, prove their eligibility in order to claim tokens by presenting a leaf that is being verified with a root. And it also integrates with vesting and lockup features, which are other smart contracts in the Hedgy Finance product. So as a team a manager or a protocol founder, I can come and create token claims and put all these kinds of settings that will essentially e trigger a function in a smart contract. They'll create a new lockup claim campaign. And now we dive a bit more to the technical level. How does it work in the smart contract level? For well, first of all, the user calls the team member with the tokens calls the create locked campaigns. Then what it does, it takes the tokens from the founder or the team member that wants to create the campaign to the claim campaign smart contract and approves this token locker uh, smart contract to spend those tokens. Now, once these tokens are available in the smart contract, when users come and claim and maybe their vesting period matures, they can come and take the tokens and the contract uses the transfer from function to operate these transfers using this specific approval that was granted before. And guys, my goal here is to deliver for you as much value as I can and explain it in the most simple way I can. So to be both engaging and educating. Now, the thing is that this code base went through three smart contract audits by three different strong audit firms. And one of them is Consensus Due Diligence, one of the most known auditing firms. And you can see here the audit report that Consensus generated for Hedgy. And you can see that the audit took place between April 8, 2024 to April 22nd, 2024. And vesting lockups was in scope and delegate token claims was in scope as well. But wait a second. 
During this audit, on April 19th, the Hedgy Finance Protocol was hacked and $44 million were stolen. How come? How come the contracts are being exploited? Meanwhile, the audit is ongoing. So there are a few explanations for this, but this is not the interesting part of this video. So it wasn't the scope, the contracts were deployed and so on. But now we're going to move on and see what happened in this exact hack. You can see here the on-chain message that the Hedgy Finance team is trying to reach out to the exploiter, trying to close some kind of deal or ask him to return the tokens. They hope that he's a white hat hacker and they tell him that he can return the funds to this exact address in order to avoid legal consequences because they are willing to pursue legal actions so now that we saw what happens let's try to understand how the attacker was able to come up with this attack we'll try to find the root cause the vulnerability that allowed the attacker to exploit the contract and steal 44 million dollars and later on we'll see how using an ai tool the hedge team could prevent this exact attack. So remember that I told you that teams can come and create token distribution campaign? Well, when they do so, they enter this create locked campaign function and you can see that it's an external non-re-entrant function. Now, before I reveal the bug and the security issue, I want you to pause the video and try to read this function very carefully, try to understand how it works, what it does, and see if there is any potential vulnerabilities or bug that you can find here. Well, you actually got a small clue because you can see that the safe increase allowance call over here is highlighted and here as well. Let's zoom in a bit, the same exact function, and we can see this Two things that are marked with red squares. The first one is transfer tokens. So like I said before, when a team member creates a campaign to distribute tokens, first this create locked campaign, this campaign smart contract is trying to take the tokens from the one who created the campaign. And this is exactly what happens here. So this exact smart contract accumulates a lot of tokens that are about to be distributed. It could be USDC tokens, it, it could be protocol specific tokens, it could be ETH and so on, wrapped ETH and so on. So this contract is very valuable, it holds a lot of tokens. And then you can see over here and over here the donation thing and also the campaign thing over here, these two amounts are being approved. So this contract approves another address. You see here this donation.tokenlocker, claim lockup token locker this contract is being approved to spend these tokens because later on users can come not to this contract but to the other token locker contract and claim their tokens when their vesting matures for example or when they present a right merkle proof and you might look at this and say well johnny looks pretty good to me right so he takes the tokens now it's in the contract, then it proves another contract to spend it. And this contract is responsible to distribute the tokens. So the users come and they can take the tokens from this contract. Makes sense, right? What's the issue here? Where is the vulnerability? So, so far, so good. But when you combine it with another function called cancel campaign, that's where the issue is. It's some kind of vulnerability that when you combine two functions, it can be exploited. So now I want you to take a closer look at this cancel campaign function and try to find the bug or the vulnerability or maybe the missing functionality that does not exist in the function and could prevent this particular hack. And the answer is that spending approval is not revoked. Remember here when created a campaign, we approve this token locker address that is, by the way, user supplied. So essentially this contract that owes a lot of money from a lot of campaigns is approving another address that is controlled by the user, that the user is passing to the function to spend this amount of tokens that he just got from the user. But when the user cancel, when the team member cancel the campaign, this approval is not revoked and this token locker address that the user supplied can still spend the tokens on behalf of this claim campaigns contract that manages a lot of campaigns of a lot of teams and holds significant amount of funds.
And this is very, very bad. Now, how can it be exploited, you might ask? Very, very easy. You take a flash loan with a lot of money, a lot of USDC. Let's say there is a lot of USDC in this contract that you want to steal. You take a flash loan for this exact amount. You create a campaign all in one atomic single transaction. You create a campaign. Then you close the campaign. What happens is that you get back the money. So then you can pay back your loan. But since the approval since exists to the token locker contract, you can use this approval and call the transfer from function from this address that you provided you just call this claim campaign contract and just steal all the money from the claim campaign contract and that's exactly what the attacker did and stole 44 million dollars from the smart contract now the mitigation is very simple and very straightforward just when you cancel the campaign obviously revoke the approval change it to zero this just this line over here could have prevented this catastrophic $44 million hack. Could it be prevented? It's been through three audits of three audit firms that couldn't find this bug, but maybe if the developers would have used Olympics AI, an amazing AI tool that you will see in a moment how it works, maybe they could have see this bug and fix it before deploying the smart contracts to the blockchain. And I'm going to show you an insane AI tool that I recently uh, encountered and used. It's called Olympic Fuzzer Test generation and it's one of the most interesting tools that i've seen in web3 security now we'll see exactly how it works and how it could find a vulnerability olympics are creating amazing web3 security tools for both smart contract developers and smart contract auditors and the idea here is that the developers can use these tools before the audit in the pre-audit phase maybe while developing the smart contracts or before starting an audit and it can allow them to find a lot of vulnerabilities and fix them beforehand and make the whole audit process way more efficient and maybe even find issues that would never be found in the audit phase itself, which is exactly what is kind of happening here. So with the way this fuzzer works is that you create a new repository with your contracts and all the prerequisites that come from Olympics tools, and you create some configurations of which contracts you want to try and attack using this tool. And then use this cool CLI uh, tool, cool binary Olympics release with this generate fuzz test flag. You give it a smart contract that you want to scan and find vulnerabilities using these fuzz tests. You can see here the example that we chose this claim campaigns.sol contract where this approval vulnerability exists. When you click enter, the magic happens. What does this tool do? It comes up with different attack strategies and trying to attack the smart contracts based on past exploits and audit reports finding. And also it has an AI component that come up with new attack scenarios. It also scans all kind of paths and then it generates and executes many exploit scenarios based on the attack strategies and the path it found in the smart contract. So what is a path? Let's say there is this create unlocked campaign, which is another function in a smart contract. Then every required statement is a path, right? Because this could be either true or false. This could be either true or false. And every if statement is also a path because this could be true or false. So it's trying to create as many unit tests as possible to enter every single path and see if it can bring the state to some kind of vulnerable situation or or a state that will give advantage to the attacker and harm the protocol. So every condition is kind of a path, right? Because it could be either true or false, and it's trying to cover all the paths and try to find this predefined and auto-generated attack scenarios. A few seconds or sometimes minutes later, depends how big the smart contract, you will receive an email directly to your email box with this awesome summary and this attached zip file. Okay, so what does the summary mean? First, it tells you how many paths were checked, how many paths there were, how many covered, and how many weren't covered. So maybe you want to take a look and try to see why they weren't covered and check them yourself. Then it creates all kinds of tests. In this case, it created 3,371 tests. Now, out of this 3K, 3.3K test, two of them were able to exploit the contract, this claim campaigns contract that was the target, and to bring us to a state that is problematic, 
to the protocol and to the smart contract. And here, this zip file contains all the project with all the tests that were generated, including these two exploit cases. So you as the developer can take a look at this FAS test that were the fuzzing and the tests that were generated and try to see what POC particularly exploited your contract and understand the vulnerability and fix it. So we can look at it like a POC generator. It try to come up with so many POCs and automatically generates them and runs them and try to see if some of them, some of the POCs and the tests are able to exploit the contract. This is a joker tool for both smart contract auditors and security researchers. I can imagine how helpful it can be in an audit contents, for example. And this is how a test look like. It's simply a foundry test with all the setups, with all the deployments. As you can see over here, it does all kinds of uh, manipulations and hacks like dealing tokens to the uh, address, to the attacker. And then uh, instead of just using flash loans, it just creates tokens out of nowhere, then calls these functions in certain orders and try to see eventually if certain conditions are true or false. And this is the last test. As you can see, there are a lot of tests that are being generated while you just wait. You run this tool and this magic happens in the background. And in this exact smart contract, it generated 3,371 tests. And one of the tests successfully exploited the contract. So it means that it was able to find a vulnerability and it gave you already the POC of how this vulnerability can be exploited. And you can see the test case 2477 is the lucky one. And this one was able to reproduce the same attack that just happened and allow the attacker to drain $44 million. You can see how it calls this approve, create load campaign, cancel campaign, and then use this transfer from to steal all the tokens and increase the attacker balance and drain this campaign contract. This is super powerful for both developers and security researchers. And if you want to try it out, then I have very good news for you. There is exclusive offers for people that are watching this video, that are following my channel and my content, and you can get a free trial and try all Olympics tools, both the static analyzer and this fuzzer and the test generation tool that I just showed you. So if you go to this special link, JohnnyTimeXYZ slash Olympics, also the link will be in the description below, you can get, you just submit a form and then you can get free access both to the static analyzer, which is another super powerful tool that you can attach to your VS code or use through CLI and then find issues and bugs automatically in your smart contract. And you also get two weeks free to this fuzzer, the tool that I just showed you that generates all kinds of tests and try to exploit a contract with different attack scenarios, but there is a catch. The tool is not out yet, but once it becomes public, once the alpha phase, the public alpha comes out, then they will give you two weeks for free to try it out. So definitely go to this link, put your details and get for free a trial for both these awesome tools. So this is Olympics. Definitely check out their website. They have awesome tools for security researchers and smart contract developers. And also go to the link in the description, fill up the form, and you will get your access to these tools just because you're one of my community members. You follow me, you watch this channel. I was able to get this awesome deal for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome Web3 hacking content. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next tutorial.